Hello everyone. So, this is the third lecture on conic sections. So, in lecture 1, we studied about parabola and then derived the standard equations of parabola and then discussed some properties. In the second lecture, we discussed about ellipse and learned the standard equations of ellipse. Now, in this lecture, we will study about the third kind of conic sections, which is called hyperbola. So, let us start with what is an hy a hyperbola. So, the definition is a hyperbola is the set of all points in a plane. the difference of whose distance is from two fixed points in the plane. is a constant and we will take uh, the constant to be less than the distance between the two fixed points. So, recall that uh, we defined ellipse to be the set of all points in a plane, the sum of whose distances from two fixed point is a constant. Here the difference is that we instead of sum of the distances from two fixed point, we take the difference of the distances from two fixed point. So, just like for ellipse, these two, the two fixed points. are called the foci of the hyperbola also the midpoint the midpoint of the line segment joining the foci is called the center center of the hyperbola and the line the line through the two foci is called the transverse axis. Of the hyperbola. And the line which is perpendicular to transverse axis. So, the line perpendicular to the transverse axis and passing through the center is called the conjugate axis. Uh, 
of the hyperbola. So, let, let me draw this. So, we have two fixed points in the plane, let us call them f 1 and f 2. So, these are both foci. So, this is a focus, this is another focus of the hyperbola. The midpoint of the line segment joining these two foci is called the center. So, this is the center let us say O, this is the center of the hyperbola and the line which passes through these two foci, this line will be called the transverse axis. and the line perpendicular to the transverse axis and passing through the center, this is the conjugate axis. <coughs> so, now let us assume that the distance from the center to each of the foci is c. So, this distance is c, this is c. So, let the distance between the two foci that is f 1 f 2 is equal to 2 c. This is a positive number. So, and let the center be at the origin and the foci lie on the x axis. So, we have this is the x axis and we are taking the center to be the origin and foci f 1 and f 2 lie on the x axis. So, x axis is the transverse axis and the perpendicular will be y axis which is the conjugate axis and what we have is that the distance between f 1 f 2 is 2 c. So, these distances are c and c. So, therefore, the coordinates of f 1 f 2 is this is minus c comma 0, this is c comma 0. So, then f 1 is minus c 0 f 2 is c comma 0. Now, we want to trace this uh, hyperbola. So, hyperbola is the set of all points such that the difference of the distance from f 1 and f 2 is 0. So, let us say there is one point p here, then we have p f 1 is the larger distance here, p f 2 is the smaller distance from the foci. So, p f 1 minus p f 2, so if p is 
any point on the hyperbola then p f 1 minus p f 2 this is in absolute value equal to constant. Let us say this constant is equal to 2 a. So, then we have in the definition that this constant is less than the distance between the two foci. So, we have 2 a is less than 2 c. So, a is less than c. Now, let us try to find some points on this hyperbola. So, suppose there is a point a on this hyperbola. So, let a whose coordinate is x comma 0 b a point on the hyperbola. So, let us draw this again f 1 f 2 this is minus c comma 0, this is c comma 0. Now, if we have uh, a point x comma 0, sorry, if x is between 0 and c, then we see that this uh, distance let us say this is the point A, A f 1 minus A f 2, this is the difference between the distance of the point A to the foci f 1 and f 2, this we want to be equal to 2 A. Now, what is A f 1? A f 1 is this distance is c, this is x. So, a f 1 is equal to c plus x and a f 2 is equal to c minus x, because this is again c. So, a f 1 minus a f 2 is c plus x minus c minus x, which is equal to 2 x, but what we want is that a f 1 minus a f 2 is equal to 2 a. So, 2 x is equal to 2 a, which implies x is equal to a. Similarly, so what we get is a comma 0 lies on the hyperbola. Similarly, we can see that minus a comma 0 also lies on the hyperbola.
also if mod x is greater than equal to c then x comma 0 does not lie on the hyperbola. This is because if you see if my x comma 0 is here, then the distance of this to f 1 minus the distance of this to f 2 is nothing but the distance between f 1 f 2. So, this is because if x is greater than c or x is less than greater than equal to c or x is less than equal to minus c, then the difference of distance is from f 1 and f 2 is f 1 f 2 which is equal to 2 c, this is not equal to 2 a. So, if we have f 1 f 2 like this, And if we have point A here, x comma 0, then A f 1 minus A f 2 is equal to f 1 f 2. Similarly, if I have a point B here, then B f 2 minus b f 1 is again equal to f 1 f 2. So, we have exactly two points on the x axis which lie on the hyperbola. So, there are exactly two points on the transverse axis which lie on the hyperbola. The coordinates of these two points are minus a comma 0 and a comma 0. So, these two points will be called the vertices of the hyperbola. So, in the picture, we have focus F 1, F 2. lying on the x axis minus c 0 and c 0 and we have these two points let us call them a and b whose coordinates are minus a 0 and a 0. These are the 
vertices these are called the vertices of the hyperbola now let's find a standard forms of hyperbola so there are two types one is uh, foci on the x axis and second type is foci on the y axis right now we are not discussing the general form we are taking these two forms so the first form that we have been discussing now we have the transverse axis is x axis and conjugate axis is y axis foci f1 f2 this is the center this is minus c comma 0 f2 has the coordinate c comma 0 let us take p to be any point so let p x comma y be any point on the hyperbola with x greater than 0. So, we are taking the point to lie in the first quadrant or fourth quadrant. So, if I have any point p here whose coordinate is x comma y, then we have p f 1 is the bigger distance, p f 2 is the smaller distance from these two foci. So, then we must have p f 1 minus p f 2 is equal to constant which is 2 a. So, what is p f 1? p f 1 is the distance of the point x comma y to minus c comma 0. So, this is x plus c square plus y square under square root p f 2 is x minus c square plus y square square root. So, we have a square root of x plus c square plus y square minus square root of x minus c square plus y square. This is equal to constant which is 2 a. Now, we have to find a equation between x and y. So, we write x plus c square plus y square this will be 2 a plus square root of x minus c square plus y square whole square which is equal to 4 a square plus x minus c square plus y square plus 4 a times square root of x minus c square plus y square. This is x plus c square plus y square. And here you can cancel y square. This implies 4 a times square root of x minus c square plus y square equal to 
x plus c whole squared minus x minus c squared minus 4 a square. But x plus c squared minus x minus c squared this is equal to 4 x c 4 c x minus 4 a square cancelling 4 from both sides and then squaring we get a square times x minus c square plus y square this is equal to c x minus a square whole square which implies a square x square plus a square c square minus 2 a square c x plus a square y square this is equal to c square x square plus a to the 4 minus 2 a square c x. So, we have this term cancels and now we can write this because a is smaller than c. So, we write this as c square minus a square x square minus a square y square this is equal to a square c square minus a to the 4 which is equal to a square times c square minus a square. So, let us put c square minus a square equal to b square. Then we get b square x square minus a square y square is equal to a square b square dividing by a square b square we get x square by a square minus y square by b square is equal to 1. So, this is the equation which is satisfied for any point x with x positive. So, we see from here that this will imply x square by a square equal to 1 plus y square by b square. So, if we take any y this is always greater than or equal to 1 which implies x square is greater than equal to a square. So, this implies x is greater than equal to a for x lying in the positive half plane. So, any point on this hyperbola we have these are foci f 1 f 2 and we have two vertices minus a comma 0 a comma 0. Also from this equation you can see that if y is 0 then x square equal to a square. So, a comma 0 is a point here and this says that x is always greater than equal to a. So, any point will lie 
on the right of the line x equal to a. This is line x equal to a. So, if p is a point here, this is x comma y. So, if you trace this, you will get something like this. Also, from here you can see that this equation is symmetric about x axis and y axis. If I put uh, if x comma y lies on this, then x comma minus y this will also lie. So, the graph will look like this. Similarly, you can show that for x negative again we get the same equation like this. So, similarly if p is x comma y with x less than 0 on the hyperbola, then So, now if p is any point here, we have p f 2 is bigger than p f 1. So, in this case we will solve for p f 2 minus p f 1 is equal to 2 a and proceeding like in the previous case we get the same equation x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to 1 where b square is c square minus a square. So, in this case again we have a point here minus a comma 0 which lies on the hyperbola and the hyperbola will be like this. So, now we get the graph. So, the hyperbola x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to 1 looks like we have two vertices minus a comma 0 a comma 0 the hyperbola passes through these two vertices it is always for x greater than a or x less than minus a and it will be symmetric about the x axis also symmetric about the y axis. So, this hyperbola has two branches one is this one for x positive and this is for x negative. So, this is symmetric the hyperbola is symmetric 
about the transverse axis as well as the conjugate axis. Now, second form of hyperbola is when the foci on the y axis. So, this is the second form foci on the y axis. So, in this case, you have x axis, y axis. foci lies on the y axis. So, the coordinates will be 0 minus c and 0 c and now we have this y axis in this case is the transverse axis. and this is the conjugate axis. And we can see that uh, the graph that we will get is by simply interchanging this x and y axis. So, the hyperbola will look like this right? and this is the point 0 comma a, this is 0 minus a. The equation of the hyperbola with foci on the y axis is given by we replace x and y. So, we have y square by a square minus x square by b square equal to 1. So, this is the hyperbola and you can see that this intersects the y axis at plus minus 0 sorry this intersects the y axis at 0 plus minus a and this will not intersect the x axis, because if you put y equal to 0, we get minus x square by b square equal to 1, which does not have any real root. Also, mod y is always greater than equal to a, that is y is either greater than equal to a or y is less than equal to minus a. So, now just like for uh, ellipse, we will define lattice rectum of uh, hyperbola. So, let us look at uh, the hyperbola with transverse axis as x axis. If these are vertices minus a 0 and a 0 and the focus here is c comma 0 and another focus is at 
minus c comma 0. So, what is lattice rectum? Lattice rectum is uh, the line segment joining two points on this uh, hyperbola such that this passes through one of the foci and is perpendicular to this uh, transverse axis. So, so this is lat one lattice rectum, another will be on the negative x axis like this. So, this is line segment passing through through a focus and perpendicular to the transverse axis. and having end points on the hyperbola. So, we would like to find the length of this lattice rectum. So, if I call this point A, this point as B, then we can see by symmetry that uh, if both has x coordinate as c and if y coordinate is beta here, then this is minus beta. So, let a equal to c minus beta and b equal to c beta. then we want to find the length. So, length of the lattice rectum, then length of the lattice rectum L is equal to 2 beta and this is same thing as length of this other lattice rectum by symmetry. So, we want to find what is beta. So, since c comma beta lies on the hyperbola. Whose equation is x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to 1, we get we put x equal to c, c square by a square minus beta square by b square this is equal to 1, this implies beta square by b square is c square by a square minus 1, which is c square minus a square by a square, but c square minus a square we have called it b square. So, this is b square by a square, this implies beta square is b to the 4 by a square which implies beta is b square by a. So, length of the lattice rectum L is 2 times b square by a. This is the same formula as we got for ellipse. So, length of lattice rectum is 2 b square by a. Now, just like for ellipse, we define the eccentricity of the hyperbola as E is equal to C by A. So, for hyperbola what we see is that A is 
strictly less than c. So, this is greater than 1. Now, we will look at uh, a few problems. So, find the foci vertices eccentricity. and length of the lattice rectum for let us look at first hyperbola as x square by 16 minus y square by 9 equal to 1 and second one is 9 y square minus 4 x square equal to 36. So, the first problem if we see we have x square by 16 minus y square by 9 equal to 1. This is of the form x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to 1. So, this says a is equal to 4, b is 3 and foci lie on the x axis. So, foci the coordinate is uh, plus minus c comma 0, what is c in this case c square minus a square equal to b square, this implies c square is a square plus b square which is 4 square plus 3 square, this is 25, this implies c is equal to 5. So, foci are at plus minus 5 comma 0, vertices at plus minus a 0. So, this is plus minus 4 0. Eccentricity E is equal to C by A, C is 5 and A is 4. So, this is 5 by 4 and the length of lattice rectum L is equal to 2 B square by A, which is equal to 2 times B is 3 here, so 9 by A is 4, this is 9 by 2. Similarly, for the second problem, we have 9 y square minus 4 x square equal to 36. So, we write first in the standard form, this means y square by 4 minus x square by 9 is equal to 1. This is of the form y square by a square minus x square by b square equal to 1 with a equal to 2 and b equal to 3. So, this form is when the foci lies on the y axis. So, therefore, foci will lie on the y axis and and we will have coordinate 0 plus minus c, where what is c? c square is again a square plus b square, which is 2 square plus 3 square. 
4 plus 9 is 13. So, c is square root of 13. So, therefore, foci have coordinates 0 plus minus square root 13. Vertices are now on the y axis, which coordinate 0 plus minus a, a is equal to 2. So, this is 0 plus minus 2. Eccentricity E is C by A, C is root 13 divided by A is 2 and length of lattice rectum L is 2 B square by A that is 2 times B is 3 here. 3 square by a is 2. So, this is equal to 9. Okay, so, we will end the this lecture here. In the next lecture, we will discuss uh, some more problems on hyperbola and then we will discuss some more advanced topics on parabola, ellipse and hyperbola. Thank you.